This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, and especially at the moment, I do hope you're well. Now then, let me tell you a little story. Uh, many years ago, back in the 90s, I joined a band, and this was an originals, kind of pop rock type band, um, doing our own stuff, you know. And um, the main songwriter, who was also the singer and rhythm guitar player, uh, turned to me in a rehearsal and he said, can you play a bit like Mark Knopfler on Sultans of Swing over this tune? I said, well, write me a chord sequence like Sultans of Swing and I'd be happy to oblige. It went over his head. He didn't see the point. The point is that uh, how memorable and interesting your guitar solo is depends a lot on how memorable and interesting the chord sequences that you're playing over. So what I thought I'd do today is show you one of my favourite chord sequences that I enjoy playing over a lot, and it seems I'm not alone because this basic sequence has been used many, many times over the centuries to create uh, memorable tunes on top of. Um, coming up next, you're going to hear the solo and then a bit of an explanation about what's going on in the chord sequence and what I'm doing over the top of it. Uh, incidentally, this is also a bit of a workout for the Harley Benton British sound pedal uh, that I'm using to get my main guitar tone on this with a bit of reverb and delay uh, plastered on in the mix. Anyway, here's the solo and the breakdown of what's going on. Okay, as I said earlier, the real star of the show in this case is the chord sequence. It's a chord sequence that once you hear it in its final form, you will, I'm sure, recognise it because it's been used many, many times in many songs by many artists because it has the effect of flattering whatever you do over the top of it, whether it's uh, singing lyrics or playing a guitar solo or composing a melody or whatever it's very flattering to what you do so what is this chord sequence well here it is you can see it on screen and if i just play through it uh you've got d to a to b minor to b minor seven to g back to d to e minor and then g again then we go a a7 F sharp minor, then back to A again, then D, G, D, and then A. And it sounds okay, but there's nothing really earth-shattering about it. What we need to do here is um, just 
tweak it a little bit and the way we're going to do that is by looking at the notes that are actually in the chords and there they are there you can see them right there each chord broken down into its constituent notes and once you have that you can begin to um, start thinking about what notes you put in the base of each chord. And if we do this here and play the notes that I've circled in red as the bass notes, then we get a very interesting effect. The uh, bass line effectively descends down the scale. We're in the key of D major here, and the bass line descends down a D major scale in effect. And if I play that now, I'm just going to put the pick down and uh, play it finger style, we get this. Yes, it makes you want to skip the light fandango and dance cartwheels across the floor, as the miller told his tale, and <laughs> all of that. Um, many, many songs have used this, uh, White the Shade of Pale, obviously, uh, but you know, you'll know you find it, uh, or something very similar to this, in When a Man Loves a Woman by uh, Percy Sledge, or the verse section of Since You've Been Gone by Rainbow, and I guess you can trace it all the way back to uh, J.S. Bach, Air on a G-String, and probably before that as well. So that's the chord sequence. It's um, very flattering to whatever you do over the top of it. Um, you know, pretty much whatever you do, as long as you're avoiding wrong notes, there's always that caveat, uh, as long as you're avoiding wrong notes, it will tend to make it sound more interesting. Uh, a couple of little things I like to do over a chord sequence like this is to um, just stay on the same lick and repeat it and repeat it. And because you're getting that sort of descending bass line kind of falling away underneath, it um, it just has the effect of making it sound more interesting I think there was one point in the solo where I went like something like something like that and just that repetitive lick like that with the bass line kind of um, grinding down away underneath it it really does kind of make for an interesting effect or even better than that is to play something that ascends. While the bass line is descending, if your melody line or your solo is ascending, then that has a lovely effect of creating counterpoint. So there were probably places where I went... licks like that where I'm ascending the D major scale which is what I'm using uh, to play over this. Uh, let's talk about scales for a moment. Basically uh, all it is because you've got a, a strong D major chord tonality um, just use D major pentatonic. And then because the A chord and the F sharp minor uh, both have a C sharp note in them. You can add C sharp notes into it. And because the G chord and the E minor both have G notes in them, I'll just find a few G notes and add those in as well. There's one there and another one there. So you're adding Gs and C sharps into your uh, D major pentatonic and you get... That essentially a D major scale, or you can call it the D Ionian mode if you so wish. Um, so that's essentially what's going on. It's that descending bass line chord sequence that makes just regular mundane, frankly, uh, D major scale licks sound, you know, flattered uh, as you play them over the top of it. Um, if you're in a band, um, and you are on good terms with a bass player, why not get together with a bass player and, and talk about this? See, see how you can create this sort of descending, or for that matter, ascending, uh, it works in either direction, bass line uh, underneath the uh, chords that you're playing over, and it will have um, you know, a flattering effect on, as I say, whatever you do over the top of it. Try it out. It's fun. 
And there you have it. And as always, uh, just give me a day or two to get busy in Guitar Pro and I will have all of that tabbed out and up on my Patreon page in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats for your delectation. As a special thank you for my Patreon supporters. Uh, there'll also be that clip that you've just seen there and the jam track to play over so you can, you know, just kind of get, get into it and uh, have a go seeing what you can come up with over that same chord sequence. And that's pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful and informative. Informative, rather. And if you have, uh, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it? Um, I'll just mention as well, if you want to support the channel, obviously I've mentioned the Patreon, but you can enroll on a course. Or you can buy some of uh, my gorgeous wifey's jewellery that she makes. And all the links are down in the description. Also, these t-shirts that uh, feature the character caricature of me done by pete axe caricaturist he's called his link is also down there if you want to uh, commission some work from him um these t-shirts which um have got this design on them i've been selling them on teespring and um so far there's been about 61 pounds plus change that has been raised uh, that i would have got from the sale of these shirts and that money has as i've said gone to zoe's place baby hospice a fantastic charity in middlesbrough which does loads of great work with uh, very seriously Ill young children so buy a t-shirt support a good cause everybody's happy and that's it for today folks hope you've enjoyed the video and um i'll see you next time stay well folks stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now Hi.